In this question, we're told that the number of car immobilizations carried out by a security company patrolling a car park over a period of 80 days is summarized in the table below. So on 10 days, there were no immobilizations. They didn't put any clamps onto the cars. 20 times, they only had to clamp one car. 21 times, they clamped two cars. Okay, so we're asked to use a chi-squared test at a 5% level of significance to investigate whether the above data can be modelled by a Poisson distribution with a mean of two immobilizations per day. Okay, so we'll start with our null and alternate hypotheses. So H0 is that the Poisson distribution with a lambda value of two is a good fit and H1 is that the Poisson distribution with a lambda of two is not a good fit. So the first thing that I'm going to do is to calculate the expected frequencies for each of these number of immobilizations. So I'm going to do a Poisson calculation where the lambda equals two and the probability we get will multiply by 80. That will be the expected frequency out of 80 days. So here we'll have the probability that x equals zero and we'll multiply that by 80. That gets us 10.827. Similarly, we get 21.654 and so on. For this last group, although there were no days with seven immobilizations or eight immobilizations or any higher numbers, we still need to work out the probability or the frequency that would be associated with them. So four greater than or equal to six, I've done that Poisson, and then I've multiplied it by 80. So it's not just the Poisson for six, since the Poisson distribution is infinite, I need to think about all the outcomes above six as well. Okay, so I've got these. The next step is just to look and check if all of my expected values are above five. If not, I'm going to need to merge some of these groups together. And starting from the bottom, I can see the bottom two are below five and merging them won't even be enough to get a total of five. So I actually need to merge all these bottom three together. That makes sure that all the expecteds are above five. Okay, so I'm just gonna rewrite the table of observeds and expecteds so that I can easily calculate my test statistic. So here I'm gonna to merge together the eight, the six, and the zero. That's where the 14 has come from. And then for the expecteds, I'm gonna merge the 7.218, 2.887, 1.325, and that gives us 11.46. Okay, so I'm ready to calculate my test statistic, but I'll like to have my critical value and my diagram made ahead of that. So let's calculate our critical value. I needed this table to calculate the degrees of freedom at a 5% level of significance and degrees of freedom being five rows minus one degrees of freedom is four. So the critical value, we're gonna look up the chi-squared critical value for four degrees of freedom at a 5% significance level, we get 9.488. So on our diagram, on our chi-squared diagram, this is the critical region. Any values over here, we're going to reject the null hypothesis. Let's calculate that test statistic. I'm going to use the sum of the observed squared over the expected, subtract n, the grand total. So for each of these, it's the black observed value squared over the red expected. And I'm going to add all of these together after I've subtracted 80. Make sure we get a couple of marks from the examiner and into our calculators and we get 0 0.8082. So this is extremely small in comparison to that critical value. We're very far away. We do not have a significant result. Let's formalize this. So 0 0.8082 is less than 9.488. It's not significant. And then we make our formal conclusions. Not enough evidence to reject H0. And the second one in context, we do seem to have evidence that the Poisson distribution with a lambda value of two is actually a good fit for the data. If we look back to the data to begin with, those observed and expected 
were really quite close in most instances. So it makes sense that we had such a small test statistic in the first place. It makes sense that we were likely to agree with the Poisson distribution.